Good evening, everyone. Um, as introduced, I'm the head of international e-commerce at Aurora Fashion. And I will talk about the international online strategy really to date. It's a bit, yeah. bit of an update I would do. I think a lot of people will have read in the press too that Aurora Fashion will cease to exist over the next 12 months. So this is really kind of our strategy to date. So I will briefly talk about the kind of online um, global models that we've chosen. I will talk about Enter the Brands, which is our localized platform for all the brands. And then I will go into more details um, into our localization process. So that will include the translation process that we went through, um, also some of the factors that we took into consideration when we looked at the performance that we were expecting for the sites, um, and also the team that we kind of put in place. So if I just start talking about the online models. So we've had four models that we've chosen. Um, first of all, we opened up the central UK website to 60 international destinations. Um, very much everything is in, in, is in English. We will have three currency, which is the pounds, dollars, and um, euro. And um, on that side, we don't really proactively market to those markets. So it's really just, as, as Martin mentioned, you know, we effectively open up the delivery. And the criteria for those countries was very much, we already had traffic on the site. Um, there was obviously demand. We literally just switched on the delivery to see what would come out of it. So that is one model. The second is we are closely working with wholesale partners on concession in, in, on an international basis. So that includes, for example, partners like ASOS and Zalando in Europe. Um, fantastic to kind of also get an entrance into the market to test the water, um, also specifically to get brand awareness out. I think probably one thing to remember is that when you kind of sign the contract to make sure you, you have control over the marketing that happens in these countries, because we found that sometimes we, we now end up sort of competing, you know, PPC affiliate in those markets to a certain degree. Franchise, we have a big franchise operation that's very much offline at the moment, so all of the franchise partners are looking, wanting to go online. So we've kind of, over the last few months, sort of been looking into, you know, what kind of models we can offer them. And we've sort of, in the, are in the process of delivery, um, and there will be five models that we will offer these franchise partners. And this is really kind of the spectrum from, we do everything, they will get a card to them doing everything, and we kind of get the card. So it will be kind of a spectrum where they will be able to choose. The bit that I will talk about really ne over the next few minutes, and I've been the most involved in, is other localized language sites. So we opened 25 websites across the four brands. So this is Coast, Warehouse, Oasis, and Cara Millen. Um, in Germany, Australia, US, Sweden, Netherlands, France, and Spain is in the process of going live. Uh, these sites are fully translated, um, have the localized payment methods, will have got the localized customer services. We have a marketing team, a, a native speaking team in place. Um, and also the criteria from these also, just to kind of give a big background why we chose those countries. Um, we had already high traffic volumes. We already had the delivery on, so there was demand. We, we saw that, so it's a step further, one step further ahead. Um, we had no franchise operations in those markets, um, and we just saw opportunity for growth there. So, um, Enter the Brands is effectively our localized platform, and I probably need to explain a bit, a bit better because this is really Enter the Brands was sort of the brainchild of uh, Hashlat and Ish Patel. The idea was that um, Warehouse Oasis Coast effectively gone live on one platform. So, and the whole idea was behind it that the customer would still have the full brand experience, but it would have benefits like the single basket checkout. We very much share traffic and orders, so 25% um, of all our orders are mixed, so, um, which is fantastic. And uh, we share media costs, we share resource, so we effectively have got an international team that sits within the group. Um, like I said, the site is obviously multilingual, multi-currency, and there's also um, the opportunity for us to you know, do cost promotional um, activities. And the site, the idea is, and this is also the name, Enter the Brands, it's potentially open for other brands to join the site. So um, now more about our localized approach. Uh, a lot of this we have really talked about, so I won't go into, um, 
into detail again, but this is sort of really the process that we went through, obviously looking at the, you know, the URL structure that we're going to use, delivery and checkout forms. I think one of the other things that a lot of people, you know, when you go through the localization, localization process is the detail. Address formats, for example, across Europe are different, you know, and you just need to know that because, you know, if you don't want to alienate your customer. Um, currency, obviously really important. Um, the translation process, I will talk about that a bit more. The localized payment method, I know we've talked about that a lot. Germany, you know, we do the invoicing idea in, in Netherlands, really, really important. Uh, we've got a localized customer services um, team. We, you know, offer free returns in Germany. You know, we, we follow the local um, methods. And we also, like I said, do the localized marketing, you know, the marketing methods that are relevant for each market. And we also, um, effectively localize all the creative for those markets. In terms of translation, we're actually using a translation agency. Um, and really, you know, we've kind of, we, we've every, every bit of information on the site is translated. And I think if you go through the localization and translation, I think there's a very clear correlation this is what we see with conversions. I think um, unless you kind of do the whole, go the whole way, I think you will find that, you know, to really see that jump in conversion you know, it is important to do that. So Germany, for example, we've seen our conversion doubled, you know, and, and that was um, absolutely fantastic. Um, again, I won't go into detail, that, but what we did is also when we looked into performance, because I think there is also the mentality with the international, let's open this website and it's a license to print money. I think the reality is that there are so many factors, you know, A is obviously your product relevant for that market, but there's so many factors that will influence um, you know, affect your KPI. So we really try to kind of go through all these pointers and, you know, and weigh them up. Germany, again, as mentioned so many times, I am actually German, so that's sort of probably closest to my heart because I knew, you know, as a little girl, you know, you get the catalogue out, you sit in your living room, you choose all these things because you don't pay for it, you get everything sent in, you know, living room becomes a fitting room and half of it you will send back. It's just the way it is. And I think you would be very brave to go into Germany not offering invoicing, for example. Uh, but you just need to be realistic about the fact that you will get half of the clothes back. So it's just the way it is. So, but like I said, with this in mind, we were able to sort of be quite realistic about that. So when we went into Germany, it wasn't a total shock. You know, we were, it was fantastic. We were able to grow by 700, 800% in terms of demand, you know, higher average order values, great conversion rates, but we knew also, you know, we were getting the returns back. So. It's sort of you're just kind of yeah a warning. Just be realistic about the factors that are important for each market. Um, in terms of you know once obviously we localized the website, we employed um, we have got a small team of native speakers, and um, and really what we do is our job or we see it as our job to replicate and localize. I do think majority of the countries there are more similarities than there are differences there are important differences that you can't ignore but overall um, we do see a lot of similarities so what we do is literally we take the collateral from the UK markets and we replicate and localize um, really important too and I think this is why it's so important to have native speakers and because I've seen many websites in the UK where people use a translation company nobody really checks if if what you know because a lot of translation their job is to translate as close as possible to the original, but very often you just need that local understanding um, to make sure you're on brand and you communicate, communicate to your customer correctly. So, so we are doing from a marketing communication, you know, weekly newsletter, obviously all website content is, is translated. We do, you know, relevant promotion for relevant events in those markets. Um, we have got localized PI agencies, so every time we went live with, with a site, we did get a local agency to just get us um, off the ground. Um, and from an online marketing p perspective, we do the, the feed, you know, search, um, retargeting, and social media. So we do have a Facebook page um, for enter the brands, so just to make it a bit simpler, and we simply do your target there. So um, I think the big thing that we found too, I think because marketing is expensive in, in all of these markets, I think unless you've gone through the, you know, get the product right, the pricing, get your user experience right for this market. Go through that localization process before you start because I think you will waste a lot of money um, if you just don't do it. Um, good. This are sort of few of the lessons learned. I personally, from a localization, I think if you go down the road 
of translating part of the site. I don't really think there is a health warehouse because I think to be able to gain, you know, that, that increase in conversion, you know, you need to kind of really go all the way. Um, one of the one of the other big learnings that we had was sizing. Um, I'm not sure how many people are aware, but there is there are two different sets of sizing. So we have the Northern European sizing in 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 Europe, and um, and just make sure your label is reflecting that. So we had customers, you know, that getting a, an item in Southern Europe, and, and we're just very confused about it. Pricing. Um, I think the other thing that I've heard many many UK re retailers do is that they allow customers to buy off the UK side and then they localize and suddenly the prices go up by X percent. Um, you will find obviously, you know, you will alienate the customers that are already buying there and the reality is that customers will kind of shop around and, and will know that the prices have gone up. So that is something that we did and, uh, you know, it's obviously not con conducive. So URL structure, obviously, absolutely try to keep the URL structure as local as possible. We also try to have a marketing URL and display URL that was different, doesn't work, very confusing to the customer. Um, and the other point that was already mentioned is the counter seasonality. So um, your platform should have the flexibility to, to work counter seasonal. So we, 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 for example, operate in Australia and we didn't do that first year round. So we ended up having parkers, fur parkers there in the summer. So it's obviously not, not great. So, you know, just make sure, like I said, your platform ha has that. Um, ability and you have merchandising resource to kind of, you know, merchandise <coughs> merchandise your site appropriately. So that is me.